Today we're going to be working with an 18th century men's coat. So the 18th century is from 1700 to 1799. And if you think back to your history class, you might think about things like the Revolutionary War and the French Revolution. There's a lot of really exciting political things happening in, this, in the 18th century. So as we go into this box, You can see that we've really had to be careful with how we present this. Um, this piece is in, uh, an acid-free cardboard box and it stays in here and we have this tissue paper on it to help protect it from light and from dust because this is a very, very old garment. This piece was worn by someone who was probably very elite, was very upper class, was considered very important in his time. We can tell that by looking at the garment and trying to understand how it was made and the materials that were used. So if we look carefully at this, we can see a lot of really dense embroidery. Anywhere you see a lot of colors, you see leaves and you see flowers, um, that's all been hand stitched. So you can imagine these teeny tiny threads going back and forth that someone has taken a needle and pushed it through the thread and loops over and over and over again. If we get really close on this, you can see that there are a lot of different kinds of stitches. So the person who sewed this had to know a lot of different ways of using that needle. Um, you can imagine how long it would take to create something like this and how much training it would take to be able to do this well. I think it's also worth noticing that um, this has symmetry. So if you look at the very middle of this, you can see that from one side to the other, that it's almost exactly identical. And if you've ever tried to draw, draw two things that look exactly alike, you know how hard it is to, uh, you know, to achieve symmetry, to make things look identical on the either side of one line. Um, so again, that takes a lot of skill and practice and time to be able to do something like that. This symmetry line runs down the middle of the back of the garment, so we can see on either side that it's identical. If we really focus in on individual floral motifs or individual flower pictures, um, we can see that there's a lot of care taken into choosing colors and figuring out the direction that we want the threads to run. Um, if you decide to, to try embroidery on your own and try some of this needlework, you might think about um, drawing lines to fill in the spaces that you want to have different colors to really think through where you want your needle and thread to move on a piece of fabric. As we look at the different motifs, the, the different images that are in this coat, it's really exciting to think about someone selecting what these are. So today there are a lot of ways that we can figure out how to add images. You might add stickers to a piece of paper, you might cut something out of a magazine that's important to you, um, you might use an emoji, and those are all symbols that you choose to express something about yourself, how you're feeling that day, or who you are. So when someone was having a coat like this created, they worked with someone to help design all of these motifs to figure out what was most important to them so then they could literally wear that on their clothes and communicate that to other people who saw them. So we can see floral motifs here. It's kind of interesting to try to count all the colors that are used, kind of like if you gather markers to make, um, make a picture. The person who made this had to gather all of the colors of thread in advance and plan out how much they needed. Um, you can see that there are lines in this that show the direction that the thread is stitched onto the fabric. Um, so you can see that those lines of thread kind of follow the petals and the flower. So all of that is very intentionally planned. All of that is on purpose. You might also look further down in the coat. So we're looking at it from the back and you can see that there's a line of symmetry down the center back. A line of symmetry means there's a line that from one side to the other, things are identical. So you might look at these big floral motifs, um, these floral images, and notice that they are exactly the same, um, that these yellow threads point towards the center and that they do the same on the other side. That means that this took a lot of planning to make sure that it looked identical, and it took someone with very careful stitches to make sure that they were making all of the stitches the same length, um, the same density, so trying to put them um, together compactly or make them looser um, so that these are exactly the same from one side to the other. So you might notice as you look at this piece that there is a lot of damage here, that there are holes. You can see there's a different piece of fabric that's been added to kind of fill in a gap. Um, and you can see another loss here, another area where some of the fabric is gone. You might wonder why we would want to save something like this because it's not in perfect condition. And part of that is because we can still learn a lot from this piece and think about the past. So in looking at this suit, we might think about the person who cut the suit, who made all of these individual pieces 
pieces of fabric that there were then sewn together. That would have been done by a tailor. We might also think about the person who made all this embroidery. Um, so an embroiderer would have done that in a completely separate shop. And then we might also think about the people who have worn this, the people who have maybe created some of this damage. Um, kind of like if you have uh, you know, a pair of jeans in your closet that has the, a hole in the knee, that there's probably a story from when that hole was made. So this piece would have originally been worn by someone um, in the 1700s, someone in the 1700s who had a really high status, who would have had the money to hire people who had very specialized skills to embroider and to be a tailor to create this suit. So that's part of the story of this garment. But of course, the 1700s was a really long time ago. So it's important to think about what happened between that time and now. So pieces like this were often saved to be used in theater. So if you've ever seen a play, um, or maybe you've watched TV, and you know that actors and actresses wear clothing that makes them look like someone else or like they're from another time period. Clothing like this was often worn later so that people would look like they were from the past, which is also how some of this damage happened. This, um, this piece came to the Texas Fashion Collection and became part of the wandering wardrobe because there were two brothers in Fort Worth, the Gentling brothers, who collected clothing from this time period. And they often use these pieces as props in their studio art practice. So as artists, they really liked painting and drawing pieces. And they would often use these as inspiration. They would use these as subjects for their artwork. Um, so they were really interested in all of this really beautiful, intricate detail and thinking about you know paying respect to the person who created this embroidery um, so they purchased these things and then tried to care for them um, and then celebrated them in their artwork um, this along with over hundred and fifty other pieces were donated to the Texas Fashion Collection and now these are under our care today um, and because we're trying to be very safe and taking care of them you can see that we have this tissue paper um, that's cradling this piece to keep it safe and we have this in a special box um, these are steps that we're taking to make sure that it doesn't get damaged further